Hallelujah. We serve a living God. In Him alone we trust. In Him alone we exalt. In Him alone we acknowledge. Hallelujah. This morning, I welcome you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to this morning service. Welcome all those who are watching from uh, uh, afar and those who are near on Zoom and on the Facebook. We welcome you all. You are all part of the family. Today is a special day for us. It's marking another special day in our calendar for this year. Today is a day that we have set aside that after hearing the word of God, we will look down in our hearts and uh, contribute of our substance to the upkeep of this church, especially to the work that is needed to be done that is regarding the building. We shall have a, a fundraise to support it. Hallelujah. So maybe if you are not here with us today and you are watching, you could also send a donation to this, our course for this uh, uh, building, I mean, uh, what do you call it, uh, the structure repairs that is required on this building, the church building. We have nowhere else to go but ourselves. Hallelujah. So if you would support with us this day, it will be very much appreciated. And I believe God will richly bless you for it. So wherever you are, we welcome you to contribute, to help us in whatever way you want of your substance. Uh, you can see on the, on the Zoom or on the, on the Facebook, the numbers that are there or the, the email, you can send it through the email, redeemerchurch 
at bellnet.ca. You'll find it underneath. Uh, I mean, scrolling beneath there. Uh, just grab it, and then if you have any help, you can send it to us. Hallelujah. Amen. But let us hear the word of God. Now, if you would turn your Bibles with me to the book of Ephesians. Paul's letter to the church of Ephesus, chapter number 2. I'd like to read from verse number 8 to 10. Chapter number 2, verse 8 to 10. It is a very familiar verse that you've read several times, but I, I like to uh, speak a little bit to that fact today. Let us hear the word of God. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Amen. If you suffer my team, you know, you can see it do Ephesians chapter 2 from 8 to 10. My interior are there, Sam. Now, I don't know, or they and I'm did you so I demon qua in free more. A young coupon at the day in free a new memo and no beer and walk one home. Now, you're not there or you're a boy and Christo, yes, a moon and my new mapa on young coupon a CSC at all for say you're not Timono. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to highlight, if you will, on the phrase created in Christ for good works. Created in Christ for good works. Let us go to our second reading. We find it in uh, Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 13 to 16. Matthew chapter number 5, verse 13 to 16. The Bible reads You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is, then, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. 16. Let your light shine. Let, you, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 5 from 13 to 16. Matthew and ye ma she be o ji se o fi egu ne ni petieti aso mo ni wi ase han cry da be possible into me in hinta o na won so kan ne a m fa en she kodo ase na emu o di si kan ne edu aso na ashren ama won a wo edan emu no nyina sara na mo ma mo kan ne a en she ni pa enim na wo hunu mo ne ye pa na wa she mo ja o wo suru no enu nyam amen I mean, I like also to for you to highlight verse number sixteen, where it says that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If you have a highlight, I highlight it or underline it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word that has come forth. Your word that, Lord, from the beginning was with you. Your word, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Your word has come forth this this day to deliver your people. May he go forth with power and strength, Father God, to do that which you have set forth for it to do. We pray that signs and wonders and miracles will follow these words that are spoken out of my mouth by your power to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God not by works, so that you can, one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared 
in advance for us to do. Jesus Christ speaking also on the Mount of Olives on, in the uh, Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 5, and verse 16 said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. Today I'll be talking about doing good work. I like to talk about doing good works. But I begin by saying that you are saved not by good works, but for good works. I repeat that. You are saved not by works, but for good works. You are saved for good works. Saved not by works that one will boast about, but saved for, saved for good works that your Father in heaven may be glorified. Hallelujah. Which is what you are saying. And you were saved for good works. True, we are saved by grace through faith and not works. But we are also saved by grace for good works. And I'd like to explain this a little bit. You know, everything that we see and we, we experience in this world has its beginning in the, world, the beginning of the world in Genesis. Everything that we talk about has its foundation in Genesis. You know, that's why I, I usually say that I like uh, mother's preaching because she always preach with that beginning. She always go, she will go back. And when you, when you take time to listen to uh, our brothers on desert evangelism, uh, brother Ima and brother Isaac, they will also, in the middle or in the beginning, they will always take you back to the beginning. Wherever they are, they will always make sure they take you back to the beginning to bring you from the beginning to the point where they are going to talk about. That's why I like listening to desert evangelism. And I encourage you that you also, I mean, uh, be diligent in, in listening to it and you will learn a lot from it. Hallelujah. Every Saturday, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Hallelujah. Everything has its beginning from the book of Genesis, beginnings of the world. You see, if we, were, if we are to understand what it means to be saved not by grace, but for, uh, uh, to, be, uh, to be saved not by works, but for works, we have to go back to Genesis. Hallelujah. Mankind, Adam and Eve, or mankind, was created by God's grace. Hallelujah. Was created by, in the beginning, the, the Bible begins by saying that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form. Now, wait a minute. I know that my God is a God of perfection. I know that my God is a God of good things. How can he make something that is without form and then waste? Something must have happened somewhere. That's not what we are going to talk about today. But what I want to draw your attention to is that God could have left the world, the wasteland, which was the earth at the time. He could have left it to sit there. What did he care for? He was in his heaven. The angels were worshiping him seven days a week. Every 27, what do you call it? 24 7. Every second, every moment, angels are bowing, they are worshiping, they are singing, they are flapping their wings. Hallelujah. So, what does he should, should he care? About the earth which was void and without form. Hallelujah. This is where the true love of God begins. If you want to know about the love of God. While the world was wasted and wasted. And what happened? I'm not here to tell you about that yet. But he, out of his love, he found that no, he had to do something about it. That is grace right there. That is grace right there. And so he decided to make things well. Hallelujah. He put everything into, into, into its proper place. The light, the darkness. He caused the plants to come, the animals, the waters. But once he created it, hallelujah, and his last creation was the wonderful woman. Hallelujah. 
When he has done everything, he told Adam, be fruitful and multiply. He said, take care of the earth, till the land. Do this, do this. Now, wait a minute. Have you sat down to, to, to analyze and, and try to see in the spirit's eye what God is really saying here? Hallelujah. God created everything. Hallelujah. And he told Adam to till the land. Meaning that Adam should work to live. Hallelujah. Amen. He was supposed to work to live. Making a, li making, make, make a living and life by ingenuity. When he said that, turn the earth, till it. It means that he was telling Adam that, look, feed yourself from the land. Also, there are trees, there are animals. No, take and make something out of it. You, you see, come up with something. Let something come out of what I have given you. That is works right there. God is telling Adam that use your brains. Use your mind. I've given you trees. I've given you, I mean, uh, raw food. I've given you raw meat. Think, what am I going to do with that? I'm not going to tell you to go make fire. Neither am I going to tell you to wash your fruit before. But by ingenuity, I am asking you to think and make something out of it. Hallelujah. Amen. Your life. The way that you live. Think and make something out of it. That is works. God is telling Adam, be resourceful. Be resourceful. God was not... When he said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. He did not go and tell Adam, Adam, you know what? Hmm. Every evening, tell Eve to go and bath properly and then do everything and then come and then do this and then do this and then do that. God didn't tell him that. He just said, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Hallelujah. Amen. God, in a, in a way, was telling Adam, look, I want the earth to be full of people, but I'm not going to be creative again. I'm not going to be taking clay and make another man after man after man. But you know why I say, fill the earth. Hallelujah. But my mom, I say, Hallelujah. I believe that when Adam first had Cain, right? And then he had Abel. I think he was, maybe one day he was just sitting say, Hey, yeah, Eve. We have a problem. We have a problem. He goes, but what problem? He said, God said we should multiply. But we have two. They are all the same like me. How can they? Hallelujah. How can we have a woman or a female so they can procreate? I believe maybe that something passed their mind. I'm not saying that that's what the Bible says. I'm just speculating. Hallelujah. Trying to draw your attention that God expected Adam and Eve to work. To, something good should come out of their existence. I was you see, as we leave, something good has to come out of us. When God created Adam and Eve, he was not going to be creating anymore. You see, he was not going, uh, he, he was telling Adam that don't wait till all the fish finish. Before he come and tell me that, Lord, the fish in the sea is finished. So come go put some more there. All the animals in the forest. Don't wait, till, don't wait till you have eaten them all up before you come and tell me that God, <laughs> and I'm not mine, I see you are some. It is our for Gumu, no. But by ingenuity, make sure that they never have been mean, end supply. Hallelujah. It means that Adam was supposed to work to multiply, to, to, to keep 
the multiplication of the animals, the fish, and then the fruits. That is work. God created them for, for good works. For all God's creation was created for good works. So you see, in the New Testament here, Paul tells the church in Ephesus, without going back and telling them in, in Genesis this is what is happening there, and telling them that you also, you have been created. You have been saved by God's grace, just like God saved the earth that was without void. But not just to let it be there, but he saved you so that you can be of good works. So that you can continue what God wants for the world. Hallelujah. No wonder Paul is saying that if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Creation, something that has never existed. You have been made a new, you have been, you are a new Adam, so to speak. A new Adam and Eve. He said, the old ones have passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. You have been, when we are born again, we are born in the newness of God so that we will exhibit the goodness of God. We will do good works. You see, when Israel got into the land, the promised land, the moment the first harvest came, the manna stopped. Are you hearing me? The moment the first harvest came, the manna stopped. Why? Because they have been saved from Egypt to Cana for what? Good works. They have to work. They have to do something so that people who are looking from around will say, yes, these people, they are unique. These people, they have a God. The glory and the honor will be to God the Father Almighty. Paul is saying that we are a new creation. We are like Adam. A new, we are new created. So we are supposed to be resourceful. We are supposed to bring about ingenuity and be resourceful to help ourselves. Jesus, in teaching on the Sermon of the Mount, also made the same statement. That God, in his creation of what he, his, I mean, uh, uh, his plan was, right? When Jesus Christ was speaking on the, sermon, uh, uh, on the, on the, the message on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was speaking towards what was to come, the salvation, the grace of salvation that was to come. Let me tell you one thing. That is one thing that I believe that many teachers and preachers usually miss when they take the Gospels and try to put them like face to face with the, with the, with the epistles. Jesus Christ in his time was preparing the hearts and the mind for the people to receive what was going to come. That is, the salvation which would not come until the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. So he was telling them that after they have believed, they will be like the salt of the earth. Right? They have to have an a salt have influence. When you put salt in the, in, in the, in the food, it has influence. It causes the change in the food. So as Christians, he said that we have to be changes of the world. We, our work is to bring about change in the world. Our work is to bring about a change in the, in, the, in, in the thinking, the ideas, the way that the world thinks. And we're saying to be as a sustainer, we are saying, no wonder Paul says that be, do not conform to the things of the world, but by be transformed in the renewal of your mind. Hallelujah. We are created, Jesus is saying that, to bring about a good effect in the, com in, in, in the community. He says that we are the light of the world. We have to make a difference. We have to, we have to show the people. Light shows. Light shines to show. way. And so we as light are supposed to live away our works. After we are born, you know, 
you know, you know, all our works so should be a light showing the world which is in the darkness the good way to go. And Jesus concludes by saying that so that people who are watching you will give glory to who? Your Father in heaven. Your good works will give glory to your Father in heaven. Jesus Christ led by an example. Paul record, records this in, a fish, uh, in a, uh, Philippians chapter number 2. Reading from 5 coming, he says that Jesus Christ, I'm paraphrasing, Jesus Christ, who was God in the flesh, who came in, did not I mean, think about boasting himself as God, but in everything, in humility and in loneliness, his work was what? Humility and in loneliness. He did good things, sir. He did things, sir. That gave glory to the Father. That is why he says that at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that who? Thank you. You see, the, the end result is that the Father in heaven has to be glorified. I asked you this morning, is your works glorifying your Father in heaven? Or are your works Glorifying your Father in heaven. You see, do, do people see you as a light and try to come out of the darkness that they are? Or do people see you and they go deeper into the darkness? What are your works? We are not saved by our works. But we are saved to perform works. So, so don't tell me you are saved when you are not performing works. Because the performance of works is the evidence that you are saved by grace. James says that faith without works is Yamutu. It's dead. You have faith. You don't tell your brothers and sisters, oh God, peace be with you. God will clothe you when they are walking in the snow in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, snowy time. Winter time and, uh, and you have two, two clothes. Or maybe you are warm. You are not going anywhere. But they have to walk in the place. And you keep your coat inside the room. And then send them outside and say. They have been good. Because they are not. That is faith without works. And it is dead. Hallelujah. Amen. It is dead. You see. This is how we are. This is what we've made to. You see, God, when he took Israel to the land, promised land, expected them, their good works, to continue what he had given them. You know, when they went there, they had to enjoy the fruit of the, what the Canaanites have already planted for that, that year. Hallelujah. They took it. But after they have finished it, they were not supposed to expect that God was going to go and bring back the, the Canaanites and let them farm again and then give them to eat again. But they were expected. You see, my brethren, there was a time that we needed place, a bigger place. Hallelujah. And then we pray to God. God, this is what we have. Our works. We tried our works, our best. But our best was not enough. The works was not enough. But when we tried our works and it was not enough, God added to our works to be enough. And that is where we are now. Hallelujah. You see, God helps you to set you up. In another way, I can't be say, Obo Jetri. Hallelujah. Celebrate our brother, It is God who gives the seed to the sower and bread to eat while they wait. But if God gives us the seed and we choose to eat the seed, there cannot be any harvest. God always gives us a foundation layer so that we can carry on. 
just like he gave foundation to Abraham, uh, to, uh, to uh, Adam, he's, through Jesus Christ, he has also given us a foundation. Today it is up to you and I that we look and perform our works. And if our works are not enough, then we can go to God and tell him, we tried, but that was not enough. And he will tell us, okay, my sons, my, do- my children, here we go. I'll help you out. Hallelujah. Amen. But you see, in this modern time, people want to sit without works and expect that God does everything because by grace, you have everything. You are, uh, I first say, uh, you have inherited Abraham's blessing. So you just sit down. Let me tell you something. Abraham had to work for his blessing too. He had to work to keep what God had given to him. Yes, he saved him from his paganism, but he had to work and then, and then keep what God had given to him. God expected that. You see, people do not have to go running to God for food every time. That is why he saved you. So that some, if somebody is hungry, you can feed. Have you thought, sat down to think about why it was possible that you had food still in the fridge? It was just so that you will be in a position to help anyone who might just venture to come into your, your home. Do you know that in the olden days, our, our, our parents in the village, I don't know how many of you stayed in the village, but they will always make sure that when they have cooked, they leave a, a small pot of it by the fire. Just in case I know somebody will come that needed to be fed. You see, God expects that you do not have to go to him every day. God, where's my food? God, I don't have food to eat today. God, I don't have... That is why he put us together as a family. So that I should be able to see that you don't have food. And then if I have, I have to give you. That is the good works. Hallelujah. I was saved so that I can be a blessing to somebody. My works will be a blessing to somebody. The church should not be praying always for God to, get, to help them to bring money. Because... You are saved. That is why he gave you the job. That is why he gave you the what you have. So that when the church is needed, you will be in a position to help. But, you know, most of the time, churches, we want to fast 40 days and 30 days so that God will bring somebody from somewhere to come and bring a bank account to boom, put there while we sit down. No, 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 no. You and I were saved so that we will be of good works. And our works will be is that to be in a position to help the church when they need it. That is one of the positions that we are now in here. That the church is in a need. And you and I have been saved. So that for such a time as this, we will be able to help the church. You see, we have been saved so that when people have not enough and they, have, they don't have the means that we will give them the new means. God gives us the resources so that we will help each other. God could have, could, have, could have said that, okay, sit down. Every morning, I'll come and teach you. Sunday morning, just come and sit here and I'll come and teach you. Hallelujah. But because we are saved for good works, he saved me so that I can teach you through him I will be able to teach you that you will be able to study. That is why you see elder, 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 uh, presiding elder standing here to teach you. And you, are not, you don't come here expecting the God to come and stand here and put on his white robe and start teaching you before you understand it, before you believe it. But when presiding elder stands here, you believe because that is what he's supposed to do. He, a representative of what? That's why the, the Bible says that he gave some to be teachers, some apostles and some prophets. So that we will not be tossed up and down. You see, that is the work that we are saved to do. The works that we are saved to do is to help each other. To help each other. And not wait. Not tell them, say, 
make how pie book. The better or ya quenchy, air cab, no ya quenchy, the book, why? Yamba, wow. But you have more than enough to help that need. Hallelujah. You see, don't wait for someone to come and beg you. Some of you, and that may may be a little grand who, hm? Million day. Hallelujah. Don't wait for that. Maybe if some of saw you in the morning, say, hey, okay, I just say, hmm, and that, 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 and and God sent you there because you have been saved for such a time as that to be able to help. Because God knows that you are in a position to help, he puts you with a queer so that you will help. That is why you were saved, not by works, but for the works of God. Ministry is doing the work of God for the people of God. That is what ministry is all about. In a little while, I'm going to ask you to make financial donations to repair part of this, our building, which is breaking down. Today, God is calling you to do good works in the repairs of this, our meeting place. The place needs repairs. It takes money for, to, to repair it. One thing I would like us to understand is that this is not one of the things that I like to do uh, often. But there come a time that we have to acknowledge that that is what God put us here for. To help each other. He gave us, he gave us a building and he expects that we'll be able to maintain it. The time has come that we'll be able to maintain it. The time has come when we should be able to make financial contributions to help this. You know, if you are watching, a member watching from uh, the Zoom or the uh, Facebook, will encourage you that whatever touches your heart, whatever you feel that God is directing you or leading you to, you to, please send it online to help this our cause. You see, if we do not take a step, a bold step now, something could happen. Because if somebody, you know, will be an annual troll, will be a one pay a year, should see the crack coming into the building and out of it, and say, report to the city, city comes and see it, he said, it is dangerous to live in, so we lock the place up. Where are we going to be? Then we cannot pay our, our bills either. And if we cannot pay our bills, then we stand the, 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 the chance of losing the whole property. And if we lose the, the whole property, then where are we? So you see, this is not an, any other fundraising. This is something that we need to raise up. We need to come up with at least $10,000 to fill this. Just the structure. We need to repair the structure. And I hope that today you've heard the message that God saved you not by works, but for good works. Good works such as this. Contributing to repair our building is a good work. We are saved for such a time as this. If you are hearing me this morning, how would you like to help with this, our contribution? You know, I'd like everybody to take a moment, a moment of silence, just pray about it in your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit to direct you what you should do. Maybe when you are coming from home, you have something in mind. But take your envelope, your donation envelopes, and then pray over it and ask the Holy Spirit, how best can I help? Jesus said that whatever we do, we do it so that our Father in heaven will be glorified. You know, 
as I was preparing to come in, I was watching on the Facebook in my office. And I heard Sister Josephine say, God is here. Yeah, we know God. God is here. You don't know the name. Yeah, God is here. You know, before she said that, I sent the Spirit of God asking me just by my desk that you said you've been we've been in the in the navy. What happens when the, the commander in chief comes on board any ship? And I said, the colors of that commander in chief is raised on top of the ship. It does not matter the size of the ship or what equipment is on the ship. The moment that flag, that colors is raised, every other ship is below that, that ship. And the Spirit says, so am I doing to you today. I am raising up my colors so that everyone will see that I am with you. Just a short moment later, that's where I heard Sister Josephine telling us, telling the people, oh, with this song and this thing, we know God is ministering to us, God is here. Yes, that is the truth. He has lifted up his banner on Christ Redeemer Church this morning. And it doesn't matter how big other churches are and how small we are. It doesn't matter how little or how uh, ill-equipped or, or, or whatever we find ourselves in. God acknowledges that we are big because he is here. Amen. We are big not because we are big. We are big because he is here. Be silent. Pray over your envelope and ask the Holy Spirit to direct you, guide you. You plan for something else, but maybe he's telling you now that you can do better than that. Maybe you are thinking about your building, you are thinking about the money that you are going to use to repair your car. Maybe you are thinking about the month ending. Why did pastor even take, choose to do it at the month end when all the bills are due? I don't know why, but I have been led to do it. This morning I woke up and on, on, the, on the, the, dinner, the, the dining table, properly, I mean, arranged there was, uh, they put the bills there, just so that when I come, the first thing I will see is the bills. All the bills are there. But that is not going to change my resolve for what God wants us to do. Maybe in the same way you see yourself. Father, we thank you for your inspiration. We thank you that you have been, we have been created in you, in Christ Jesus, for good works. May our good works shine forth today, that your name may be glorified. Let it be said that when your flag, when your colors was lifted up on this building, in this congregation, people saw your presence in us. People from afar will see your colors and they will know that you are with us. Lord, I want to thank you for the people that you give me and for what they are about to do. Bless them mightily. Make them resourceful and replenish for whatever they, 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 they are giving out today. And may whatever we receive, O oh Lord, by your blessing be enough to accomplish the purpose for which we are taking these donations. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.